Strike uh TG M S. Oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be striking uh, SFS allocation. We'll strike the burn on this event allocation. And then John. Can we please strike contingency programming, please? Any other amendments? Okay. Yeah, I'll back that line too. Oh, she's proxying. Hi, I'm proxying for SBC. Can we please strike the SBC programming fund? Okay. For the resolution. Uh, so the option today is either take away since it was on the end of the Yeah, I move to proceed with the resolution and waive the applying file. Okay. All in favor? Oh, we need a second. Oh, I second. Okay. Good motion. Sarah second. All in favor? We did have. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's the seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a minute zero to zero? Perfect. And that is approved. Okay. So we'll move forward with the resolution um, for today. So make sure we have that link on there. Okay. Perfect. Um, besides that, um, let's go ahead and have a further agenda and a motion for that. Second. Okay. Just one second. Okay. Hi, cool. Now I've got 11 zero to zero. Perfect. Agenda is approved. Okay. So hopefully, y'all were able to go over uh, the our um, meeting minutes from last time. Um, does anybody have any numbers that need to be out of there? No. Okay, so go ahead and approve those. Can um, I have a motion? Can I second? Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay, you have a motion, please second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, also 11 to 0 to 0. And the minutes are approved last week. Perfect. Okay. So now we can go ahead and open up the comment at the other of six. Um, you see, we have a few people. Do we have anybody on Zoom too? Thanks. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do public comments. So, public comment is the time for uh, folks to come in, very voice any comments, questions, or concerns. Um, so, yeah, the stage is forward. So, and we'll give you all that. Yeah. <laughs> No proposal comment, nobody on Zoom. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment at 707. Also, okay, going to the So we have travel contingency first up, and we'll go ahead and ask up to Josh. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well this week. This week for capital contingency, we had a total contingent or capital contingency request 
of $4,321.87, and we recommend an allocation of $4,321.87, or a full allocation um, for four USAC entities. Uh, happy to answer any questions about this, um, and I'll put that in the chat right now as well. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Josh, is there still money in the capital contingency fund? Yes. Uh, yes, there is. Um, it, it's listed on the attachment that I sent around earlier today. Um, as of now, um, before this allocation, um, there was, um, or I, I, I think that I think right now after this week, it'll be just under um, 13,000, 14,000, somewhere around there. So it's actually been quite underutilized. So there's plenty of funding still left. Thank you. Yep. Josh, can you repeat the deadline for them to apply for capital contingency? Yeah, so for capital contingency, uh, at least for capital contingency and contingency programming, we have a deadline for the re the requisitions to be submitted by midnight on uh, June 16th. Um, the easiest way to do capital contingency is through reimbursements on the requisition forms. Um, I think it also be as you know a cash advance check or a purchase order. Um, but as long as a requisition is in before, um, you know, June 16th at midnight, I think that's fine. Um, but to accommodate that, I think, you know, as soon as possible would just, you know, make it easier for, um, you know, people applying to then get those requisitions in on time. Um, so no technical deadline on, um, you know, applications, but I would say, you know, as soon as possible, just to be able to get recs submitted by that uh, 16th deadline. Oh, thank you. Can I ask another question, which is just what would the deadline be to fill out the Google form to have this like on the agenda for next Tuesday's meeting? Um, so in terms of that, um, I mean, we, we check the application basically every day. Um, so I think if you just submit it by, you know, Monday at midnight, next Monday at midnight, that should be no issues. Um, I, you could submit sometime during the day on Tuesday, but that, that could get, uh, you know, cutting it a little close. So I would say, you know, if it's in before uh, next Monday at midnight, should be no issues. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. So let's go ahead and go on to this. So, um, so yeah. Okay, so on the well, So again, I have a question on approving how much of the Second. Second. So for funding, um, is it best practice to, when you make the motion, say the amount and then to X number of the second or not the second? He is this way to this. So you can say, say I move to approve whatever job put in the chat. Oh, no. It was that for the email. Yeah. I said to two yeah. Thank you. Okay. Your motion says second. All favor, please raise your hand. Cool. Oh, this is the time where you're being allocated. <laughs> Because you have financial interest. Okay, so can I have hands up? Four, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, all against? And all staying. One, two. Okay. So we have, sorry, I forgot the number. Was it, it was nine, four, two abstaining, and two abstaining. The nine zero two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that is passed. So we have the government contingency done. Okay, and now moving on to our allocations. Alicia. Hi everyone. Um, I want to close out arc today by saying we approved five thousand one hundred and fifty dollars to three non-USAC entities. And the fun closes tonight. We are done. Thank you, everyone.
Oh, yes, sorry, I couldn't hear. It cut out a little bit. I'll put it in the chat right now. <laughs> And moving on to TGIF. Restream TGIF. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there's no allocation. Sorry, I was thinking we were striking. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, so good morning, everyone. Good morning. And now going into special presentation. Okay, so we have covered um fully update presentation and they also have slides as well. How do you want to fill up? Um, does any do you want uh, me to put the slides up or do you want anyone to like connect to this and then I can promote you as a panelist and then you guys could well, be easier or like you know, yeah. Um either way it's fun because the other easy other students is gonna be in the live stream. Can you just link the, the thing in the chat? The presentation in the chat, and I can open it in here. Because uh, yeah. then we can put it up here, and then if y'all want to come up here and you can advance the slides, I think that'll be the easiest. Okay, so whoever wants to control the slides, you can just come up here. And... Thanks, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is it possible for us to put the speaker down here? Is that not going to work? Um, this one. Maybe hit escape got all Yeah. It's do. Is this? Or you got to be. Oh, you No, no. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Welcome to our presentation. Hello, um, my name is Clara. I'm a third year sociology major. I'm so short. <laughs> um, I'm a third year sociology major and I'm the chapter chair for Software Students. A we do a quick update presentation. This is part of our contract with UCLA that at the end of each quarter, we have to um, do a presentation for you guys, telling you guys what we did. If you have any questions or anything, answer them. Um, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, I thought it was a screen share. Can you enable <laughs> the screen share? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> We're good. Um, well, yeah, okay, we're going to start with super quick intro. Let's just go in order. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophia. I'm a Christian climate science major. Um, I'm a volunteer on our classics campaign, and in the fall, I'll be running the fast fashion campaign. 
Hi, I'm Emily. I'm here in Pronoun. I'm a third year poli sci major and I'm the Beyond Classes Camping Coordinator. Hello, my name is Key. I'm a first year mechanical engineering major in Terminal Galaxy. Hi, my name is Lucy. I'm a third year physics major and I am the secretary of the board. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate. I'm a third year sociology major. I accept all pronouns and I am the Save the Bees campaign coordinator. Hi, everyone. Uh, you guys hear me? Okay, cool. Um, my name is Owen. I'm a third year about a major with a minor in education. Um, I use he, him pronouns and I'm currently the um, chapter treasurer and then the following will be running the Hungry Homelessness campaign. Okay, cool. Yeah, that works. So, wait, is this one? Are you Don't love Okay, I'll be okay. So, um, I'm going to give a quick like overview of what CalPERT is. Basically, CalPERT stands for California Public Interest Research Group. So we're a student group that started in the 70s by students who just wanted to have a say in local, statewide, and national politics. And our goal is to advocate for the public interest. So we've had a lot of wins recently. In the fall, we passed, um, well, helped pass SB 54, which is being called the most uh, comprehensive plastics uh, legislation. Uh, we've also helped pass some styrofoam legislation. Um, and we'll be talking to you about some of the stuff we've been working on this year. Um, we, uh, I, you guys might already know about this because we dropped something on Grandma, but <laughs> we're funded by students who pay a voluntary $10 CalPERT student activity fee on their tuition every quarter. So entirely student funded. We're also entirely <coughs> student run. We have a board of students and um, on the statewide level, we have an executive board of six students of which Clara is the second year in a row uh, chair of, so yay, Clara. <laughs> and um, we also have a bunch of different chapters at, I think, 41 states plus DC across the country. So yeah. Um, I said a little bit this already, but basically, uh, yeah, we have chapters uh, in California at all the UCs um, and obviously across the country. And I already talked about our board of directors and executive committee. Okay, just to recap uh, the year at our UCLA chapter, we've had 200 volunteers. We had about 100 interns work with us. We've educated 11,000 students through class presentations, and we also have 15,000 students on our email list. And now to go into some of the specific campaigns that we've been working on, starting with our Save Our Seas campaign. So um, all of us in here recognize the importance of the ocean, especially in California, where we have such an extensive coastline. Um, the ocean not only has a lot of wildlife, but it also provides half of the oxygen we breathe, as well as regulating climate temperatures. Um, but unfortunately, the oceans are under threat from a lot of things like plastic pollution and climate change, but also direct human activities, such as offshore drilling, as well as commercial overfishing. Um, and so, we're working in order to um, work on this issue and stop those things from happening. California, thankfully, has been a leader in marine protection. 10 years ago, they set up a network of marine protected areas, otherwise known as MPAs, which are basically territories that will be free from human extraction. Um, and uh, this has been like proven to be very beneficial to help move the systems regenerate, but um, it still has a lot of pushback from the fishing industry. Um, and powerful interests. And so we're working right now um, in order to provide public support in order to increase and expand marine protections, especially since the Fish and Wildlife Commission is currently in a review process looking at how MPAs have performed over the past 10 years and seeing whether or not they want to increase protections. Um, they were supposed to make a decision in April, but they pushed it back to July. And so we're continuing to work on ways to raise a lot of public support. Um, we've done an ocean carnival on campus last quarter in order to raise awareness for this issue. We've done two lobby days, one in um, Sacramento and one in DC, where we've spoken to over 50 legislators uh, about different campaigns and interests that we're working on. And right now we're running an art contest in order to continue raising awareness on campus and to support for this issue.
Hi, um, so as many of you probably know, um, we live in an economy that encourages us to buy, use, and talk at the greatest possible speed. Um, especially since COVID-19, we use uh, a lot of plastic in e-commerce. And so that's why this quarter and our past quarter, we have been targeting Amazon's online retailer, trying to get them to reduce their plastic usage. Um, I'm sure if you've ever ordered Amazon, you open the package, it's been full of like those plastic air pillows. I know people who have bought a pillow and it's had like a bunch of those air pillows in it. Totally unnecessary. Um, and Amazon has made the switch already. They have done so in Germany and India, where they have reduced their plastic use and gone to alternatives. So we're just trying to get them to stop making so much single-use plastic, especially because plastic does not biodegrade and instead becomes microplastic and breaks down and reaches farther into our environment. Um, so our goal is to get Amazon to stop using so much single-use plastic in their shop uh, in their shipping. And we've been we've been doing that by um, targeting through targeting them through their consumer base, especially because um, a lot of college students buy from Amazon, um, and Amazon cares about what their consumers like. Uh, so in the past winter and spring quarter, um, we built a really cool uh, ruined bear replica, as you can see in the lower picture up there, out of Amazon plastic mailers. Super awesome. Uh, one of my favorite things we've done. In this past quarter, we held our pack up plastics fair. Um, you can see me talking to AD7 up there in the corner. Um, we also displayed our tracker uh, project where we put trackers in Amazon envelopes and drop them on the location so they said they could be recycled and see where they ended up. And a lot of them ended up in landfills, which is not where they're supposed to go. Um, so we did that, and that was really cool. Um, so far in our campaign, we've gotten several media hits. Like I said, I was on 87, very cool. We've gotten um, hundreds of petitions and postcards that we've been sending to Amazon. So a lot of progress. Thank you, Emily. Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Kate again. I'm the Save the Bees campaign coordinator. Uh, we recently, this just this Friday, had a big event in Broom Plaza, really successful. Actually, Bach Lover Day was there. Not my favorite, but I'll take it. You know, don't forget to get Um, And so, our Save the Bees campaign is like nothing new. I'm sure you've been hearing Save the Bees for a while now, but bees are really essential pollinators. They pollinate one in every three bites that you eat. And they are facing extinction in California due to the use of neonicotinoids. Really hard word to pronounce. Just remember neonics, that's the word. Neonics are a class of insecticides that are extremely deadly to all insects, but specifically bees. They contribute to colony collapse. They are systemic insecticides, which means that when a bee lands on a flower, it takes back that pollen. The pollen has neonicotinoids in it. They take the neonicotinoids back to the colony and they kill the entire hive. So they're seeing like massive extinctions of bees and native species, but also monarch butterflies, um, all pollinators, including bats and uh, hummingbirds. So it's a really big problem and it directly affects even just human health in terms of groundwater effects. So we are urging California state policymakers to support AB 363, which is a comprehensive ban on the commercial sale of these neonics. Um, they're voting on it right now, so we're really trying as hard as possible to garner as much support as we can. And uh, yeah, remember, they would be as AD three sixty three. It's really big. Thank you. So I want to wrap up uh, with some organizational highlights. Um, to start out, we have uh, every quarter we have a kickoff meeting to. Um, just get, give an overview of our campaign and meet everybody who is interested in um, joining our chapter. Uh, the UCLA chapter has had the largest kickoff meetings um, out of all the student perks in the country um, consistently for the past three quarters. Um, and then also our pledge drive, which you guys heard about a little bit earlier. Um, CalPERG is funded by students who opt in um, for a $10 activity to be on their burn bill. Um, and this year we signed up 2,500 new dues paying members and we garnished, garnered a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, grassroots support for um, both our Beyond Plastics campaign and our uh, Protect Our Oceans. All right. Um, so, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, as I already introduced, I'm Owen. Um, so this quarter, we joined events with a bunch of other cool clubs like uh, Sage's Climate Action Night we were involved with and E3's Earth Day Fair. Uh, we also worked with uh, Rooms for Better Transit, as you guys heard about, um, and helped turn out the vote for the Universal Transit Card a referendum. We ended up getting out over 500 students to vote uh, by, by tabling and actually being out there and uh, you know getting to scan that QR code of voting, which is really cool. 
we also individually texted over 6,000 students to help vote. And then we emailed 15,000. So, you know, some pretty huge uh, like volume. It's kind of hard to, to imagine. But uh, And then we also met with uh, some campus administration and the vice chancellor student affairs uh, just to kind of give updates on our progress this year. So we're kind of involved um, as well as some of those uh, Oh, I'll lobby day, I guess I must skip through it. But um, so as uh, he mentioned, you know, a really huge part of our organization is getting that support from our students and then also going up there to uh, Sacramento in our uh, offices with elected uh, elected officials to kind of talk about uh, how we have all these students supporting us and then, you know, kind of making moves that way. So a couple of uh, lobby days that we had this quarter, we had two in particular. So we had one, which was a federal lobby day. Uh, where four students from CalPERG, uh, two were from UCLA, went up to uh, Washington, D.C. I didn't go, but, um, you know, a few students went up there uh, where we were supposed to represent California and uh, in D.C. and kind of voice our opinions on some of these issues. Uh, we did up to, we did 80 lobby meetings and 17 were directly from, uh, involved in California. And we talked to federal legislation to break free from plastic, um, pollution, make textbooks more affordable, and then uh, also ensure that we as consumers have a right to repair our uh, objects instead of urban like devices instead of going to Apple and you know, getting it repaired from there. Uh, we also had our California Lobby Day, which was actually in Sacramento here, uh, where 50 students from across the state went up to Sacramento, the capital, uh, where we met with over 50 offices to talk about our issues campaign, a textbook price transparency, transparency, electric school buses, and even more all of our campaigns that we talked about. Um, and then you can see the top right picture up here is uh, with our local representative, Isaac Bryan. So that's also really cool. Um, and then recently during week two, we participated in Ocean's Day, where I and Lucy and then three other uh, UCLA golfer students went up to Sacramento to talk specifically about uh, certain ocean spills with our assembly members and senators. So that was a really awesome experience as well. Okay, this is the end, I promise. Um, <laughs> going into next year, um, first of all, we recently elected a new board of directors for our UCLA chapter and our statewide board. Um, there's a lot of people are up here. Uh, I'll also shout out our vice chair, Natalie. She's not here because she has a lab at this time, which is a terrible time. I feel like that. Um, but she's running our new voters project at UCLA in the fall, and also she's going to be leading the like nationwide new voters project. It's really exciting. Um, Next year, we have a couple of statewide priorities. We're focusing on recruitment and leadership development, um, running big visible campaigns, um, and a third one that for oh funding. I like funding. Okay. <laughs> um, at UCLA, we're going to be running six campaigns. Uh, our lead campaign is going to be 100% renewable energy. Um, this is targeting the UC system, which is going to be really exciting to do another campus state campaign again. Um, basically, we're trying to get uh, all the UCs, but like here, specifically UCLA, to commit to 100% renewable energy by 2045. Um, in 2018, we worked with the UC Office of the President to pass the UC-wide 100% uh, clean electricity um, policy. That's supposed to be uh, done by 2025, which is now really soon. <laughs> um, and they said that they are on track to hit that, which is very exciting, actually. Um, and so basically, they asked for our help again to uh, get all of the campuses to move towards 100% renewable energy sector wide and like completely move away from uh, fossil fuels on campus. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing for our lead campaign. And um, we also have a bunch of other campaigns that we're going to be continuing. Um, the ones I've already mentioned Protect Our Ocean, uh, New Voters Project, Hunger and Homelessness, Affordable Textbooks. Um, and then we're also launching a new fast action campaign, which is very exciting. It's something I think a lot of students care about. Um, Cool. That's our presentation. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, we hope that we'll do a lot of cool work the next quarter. Um, maybe we can work with some of your offices as well. Uh, does anyone have any questions about us or any of our campaigns or how we're funded or anything? Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, I just want to say, first of all, like amazing presentation, and thank you guys so much for putting this together and um, showing me all these like cool things that are going on on campus. And so I guess now that you've kind of presented your ideas for the next year, are there any um, ideas that you guys are already thinking about where like, these accounts of people um, can like support your efforts or partner with you guys? I would say for a lot of we're, we're like running or like restarting or like running new campaigns for a lot of different ones. Um, and I think a lot of them 
would very much benefit from having a resolution passed, um, especially like to put in perspective, we have chapters at all the UCs, so we pass resolutions at all the UCs, which ends up being like actually a really big deal. Um, because they're more powerful than you think Um, so probably we'll be reaching out um about like uh passing resolutions for a bunch of different ones. Um, and then also for like more service based campaigns, we'll probably also ask if you guys want to partner about that. So check your emails. <laughs> <laughs> Going off what Sujana said, um, I really appreciate your guys' presentation and I'm really excited to see what um, potential collaboration can happen with them next year. I know that I've seen a lot of your work out there directly, and you know, I definitely think it's really important work, especially considering a lot like the things going on with the climate in particular. So I, I really do appreciate the strength and the power behind it. I think I speak for all of us here as well as myself that, you know, I think we're more than willing to collaborate in a way that you all see beneficial to the community as well. Welcome, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for coming. You know, I'm always down to help with the pollution. <laughs> I love you guys, the birds over the trans and stuff. I appreciate you guys so much. I love Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like that, you know, thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Thank you all once again. I really appreciate cover and everything that they do. They really just started their willingness to come out here to present to us. I feel like that's a really and everyone to not just today. Like they're always on the comment. I love seeing them we're at the corner. So it's really amazing to see the work they do. And we'll continue to do, especially with the Adams for next year. Um so yeah, okay. Why don't you turn next thing on the agenda? Um Some of the things that I've done, um, I would see that I ran it as a show last week. Um, after that show, I got to talk to a lot of them, um, and even the other especially just talking about ways that we can help support each other on the collaboration. And even um, they gave me some of the um, kind of options that we have, and even looking at the like some of the technical glitches that we're doing the show. So just figuring out solutions for that. We um, talked a little bit after the show about that. Um, besides that, I was also able to attend ICF's 20th um, anniversary. Um, Alicia was there and Sujin, Sujin was there as well. So it was nice when we get to them. Um, but it was just so amazing to see the alumni network that came out that were part of ICF in the past. And just over the 20 years, how much they've accomplished and will continue to accomplish and grow, especially with their recent ones with the opportunity for all campaigns. So I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, and just seeing like my work there as well. <laughs> Besides that, I was also able to review the notes from the Black Room from Hall that recently happened. Um, and on that note, I was able to talk to a previous Black Panther today. Um, his name is Zai um, Ministers. So from him, I was able to um, really just learn more about the history. Um, and especially, I didn't even know that there was a 2010 proposal that was um, for renaming Campbell Hall to more to Kermary on John Hill Gibbs and Lemon Carter. So really just being able to talk to him about that and seeing what else we can do, um, especially as that time comes around next year. I know David Bruin has done an article to um to talk about some of the things that our friends have done and at the advocacy meeting, which I'm a part of um, for next year as well. Um, on their board. So we just had a great conversation. I got to see this 1999. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to see that pass. And it was also interesting because on like one of the edges of the flyer, it said like for more information on the UCLA Affirmative Action Coalition and Educate Delivery, it said the UCLA President's Office, which I just thought was really cool. Um, so yeah, it was a great conversation to have um, Also, some of the things I've been doing, um, some other student government um, officials from other campuses have been reaching out, so I had a schedule some meetings with them to kind of talk about our goals for the year, uh, especially as some people have already started the positions before us. Um, so just talking with them. Um, besides that, I'm looking forward to CSC's annual big with this weekend. 
Also, the Afro Latinx, um, they're having a culture show this weekend as well that I'll be attending. Um, supporting some more student groups. Oh, also, I got to go to Hello um, today and meet the outgoing president and a main president. Um, so that was an amazing conversation. We got to, I didn't know those three stories, but I got to. <laughs> Like, I just going over there and being in and welcome to that space, and it's just really an amazing experience. Um, got to talk a little bit about like just that diversity under the well and um, what we want to do uh, for next year. We talk about having maybe a special presentation um, just to talk more and educate all of us on some of the topics. Um, and then they also um, I want to remind you all that they're having, I'm going to send the information to Slack, I didn't have that set up, but they're Junity event. Um, that is on the 6th, I believe, but I'll be sending that information so make sure you can ask if you can. Some chances will be there as well, so it's a really welcoming event that I encourage you all to go to. Um, oh, oh, getting ready for tomorrow. So with our appointment, um, um, yeah. so definitely in the slot, make sure you can put what's going to be available so we can help table. All of us be there. Well, whatever time you can, I know we have busy schedules. So definitely, you can make it out for at least even 30 minutes. I'll take it. Um, but we just get the word out because we definitely need to make some appointments by week. Um, so yeah. So that would be all for me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought. Ooh. Future office. <laughs> Positions need to be or we try not to put like a ASAP funding. Funding? Sorry. So five years. Be it for sure. Two and then our funding bodies as our close Okay. And does BOD have to be like uh no <laughs> <laughs> Can BOD like be a C year next year or do they need to be available? Do you have to have a C year? Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah. So we will get on that. Um, besides that, oh, sorry. I'll also be attending. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so last Friday, me, Ava, and um, Evan and Phoebe, uh, Phoebe Staff Commissioner, and Anya, the internal external <laughs> assistant staff commissioner we met with abc nick deluca uh bc Mona gordon and abc cephalo um to like talk about like different topics so we talked a lot about like the disability cultural center um we even talked about like narcan accessibility like on campus and how we want to like expand that to like the hill have them available in like residential halls um, I talked about like how we can like improve like transparency and like the relationship between like administration and student body because a lot of people don't really know who's like making decisions on campus. So we talked a bit about that. Um, he advised me to like uh, talk to like academic senate as well. So I'll be picking you up. And um, we'll be meeting quarterly with Monroe Gordon and hopefully more frequently with the other ABCs and other ABCs on campus as well. Um, but not over the summer, because we did not commit to that. Um, we also hosted our IBP Spring Showcase, where we had like musical performances from students. Um, ASU Sealy told us that Paragraph would be closing at 8, uh, they close at 7. So we had to move outside, so we're just going to ask her to be fun. So <laughs> Milan is going to be doing that because she is the great. <laughs> Um, applications for executive and director positions have opened up for the IBP office, so please share that on your social media if you can, and send the application to others who might be interested. I've found a couple of DMs already from um, I think other people who have been uh, experiencing USAC already, and our deadline is June 17th, which is a Saturday right after school ends. Uh, and then, yeah, tomorrow we have our appointments tabling. I will be there from... 10 to 12 p.m. because but I will be there to set up to help set up so I'll give them my room card. Um, I made a graphic so and I sent that to our USAC Slack so please post that with the caption that I attached with it and encourage others to apply to these uh, positions. We need to appoint ASU CLA bod by next week, please. 
please send it to uh, all the freshmen and sophomore people who will be here for the next few years. Um, and now that our last thing is now that um, our capital or contingency year plan has been approved, I will be finally sent to the office and I'll probably have to contact CS to help me move the really broken people out of the office. Mm -hmm. That is all for me. Awesome. Okay, moving on to our general way. Hi everyone, yeah, um, we have a lot of updates. Uh, first, like most of you, um, applications are out. Um, please tell all your friends and your enemies to apply. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really want to have like a big, strong, diverse office for next year. That's super important to me, so um, please reach out. Um, if you know anyone that's interested in advocacy, uh, external advocacy is good advice. Um, next, uh, as Megan mentioned, um, uh, Megan, Evan, and I were fortunate enough to meet with uh, Assistant Vice Chancellor Deluca, uh, Assistant Vice Chancellor Steflo or Steph, and uh, Chancellor Monroe Gordon. Um, there, I specifically talked about um. The, a little bit of the EVP's work with the Sepulveda Transit Corridor and continuing uh, relationship with the Facilities Commission on that, as well as um, making Narcan more accessible to Bruins, um, institutionalizing that like with UCLA um, in addition to on the Hill. So that's something that I hope Megan and I will continue to work on. Um, speaking of Narcan, um, I met, I'm meeting with an overdose soon, uh, some further discussions that we had a couple months ago about uh, the Narcan task force and more specifically moving forward with like federal funding asks to, uh, to use that money so Ash can buy um, like uh, Narcan and fentanyl testing strips uh, to help prevent uh, opioid overdoses on campus and in Westwood. Um, next, I'm setting up a meeting with ABC uh, DeLuca to talk more about uh, basic needs and some policy asks. I'm hoping that the Basic Needs Coalition um, has. Um, I want to coordinate that. I just reached out to set up the meeting. Hopefully, we have something solidified uh, next council. Next, um, I'm planning to meet with the Student Coalition for Basic Needs on Thursday. Uh, I'm super excited to talk about um, their policy asks and really contribute however I can in that coalition. Um, some of those policy asks include a safe parking initiative, uh, universal syllabi requirement, uh, explaining uh, campus resources, space needs. Uh, so I'm super excited to see where that goes. Um, furthermore, um, I set up or I set up a meeting with um, Evan the Facilities Commission uh, to discuss uh, labor rights with UCLA dining. Um, and uh, and it's just they work more broadly on campus. Um, as an office, I really hope that labor is a big priority for me, and uh, we'll be hosting teachings and workshops and all that about you know your rights and uh, hopefully you know to mobilize uh, student workers on campus. So if that pertains to you, you know people are interested in that kind of thing, uh, please tell them to reach out, reach out to me and also to apply to the EVP office. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, Next, uh, this morning, I met with the like vice chair of or something of the Northwestwood Neighborhood Council, Andrew Lewis. Um, we've uh, we've met previously, and we're just kind of re-solidifying EVP's relationship with them. Uh, there, we talked a lot about what EVP and the Northwestwood Neighborhood Council's collaborations will look like next year. Uh, specifically, we talked about um, continuing uh, vocal mobilization for the Sepulveda and Transit Corridor and really how we need to get the administration to um, take a stance on uh, supporting a heavy rail uh, stop at UCLA's Gateway Plaza with the, with the connection to the Metro's uh, D-Line that they are building on Wilshire. Um, as well as the safe parking initiative. Uh, we'll probably be writing a brief on this and I might present it to council in the coming weeks to see if there's any more initiatives we all want to do with the North Coast and Neighborhood Council. Um, Andrew mentioned, you know, revitalizing Westwood as a whole as a big priority of his personally. So I think that would be a great opportunity for if any of y'all are interested in you know, that kind of uh, realm uh, to really learn about what the council does and really how we can get involved. 
Next, um, I am meeting with uh, the Rip Shelter with the Facilities Commission um, on Thursday as well. They were going to talk about revitalizing the safe parking initiative. Um, this was an initiative that tried and failed a few years ago, uh, I think most recently out of 2020. Um, this would essentially allocate a parking lot for um, Bruins uh, if they're uh, if they sleep in their cars, a park, safe place where they can park their cars is overnight. Um, and uh, in Panda, something that the EVP office tried to do a few years ago was uh, get a couple of floors in a dorm room, in a dorm building, like allocated to use like resources there for like showers or food or things like that. Um, anything that, you know, housing is secure for those like who are in their present place to need. Um, but that also failed to do some kind of you seal in admin really goes through the initiative. Uh, funding is a concern, safety was a concern for that. We really want to see like a revitalization for this effort um, for safe parking and more broadly for um, more housing availability in Westwood and at UCLA. So that's something I'm really super excited to work on. Um, last, uh, next, <laughs> um, I set up a meeting with Sonia, who is the Graduate Student Association EVP. Um, I'm super excited to be with her the upcoming, uh, I think it was on Thursday as well. Um, I want to talk, we're going to talk a lot about labor issues as well as college affordability to really see how as EVPs we can really work together. Um, next thing, uh, on Thursday, I'm meeting with Bruce Vote to discuss um, specific infrastructural asks that we can go to student affairs for to improve uh, campus voting. Um, voting is super important and we want to make sure that there's ballot drop-off boxes that are accessible to the and uh, other, you know, signing requirements uh, that will enable better access to voting. So I'm super excited for that meeting as well. Um, next, um, I've been meeting, or I've been working with ASA, uh, the American Indian Student Association. They're coming tonight to present their 30-meter uh, telescope divestment resolution that they wrote. Super excited about that. And we're meeting to really see how we can move forward with the mobilization for that. Um, next, I set up a meeting with uh, UCLA's Ignite chapter. Uh, they forward uh, reproductive justice, and uh, I worked with them a lot last year. So in the, in, we're meeting to discuss visibility for uh, campus resources that are existing, as well as uh, hoping to meet with ABC CEPLO to discuss um, some campus website issues. Uh, Campus, the campus websites are have inaccurate information for where you can go to support if you're a survivor. Um, and more broadly, like reproductive resources in general on campus. There's like a lot of inaccuracies on the website, and Ignite's been super uh, adamant about getting admin to really fix that. And so I'm really looking forward to working with them there. Uh, last but not least, uh, I began my process to be onboarded to the UC Student Association as a voting member. Uh, so I began that today. I'm super excited to see you um, statewide mobilization efforts with them. And that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Hi, everyone. Um, so, right now, I'm working just like all of you guys in the my director positions. Um, my application is also open. So, if anyone wants to plug that around, I really appreciate it. Um, also, last week or last Wednesday, I attended the annual spring accounting banquet. And there, um, I spoke with each of the big four firms about how they go about recruiting um, business economics, economic students for, for their big, for their firms. Um, so we're just talking about like um, if it's more about a club reaching out or how like what we're going to reach out to them. And so we're talking about how we can make it a little bit more accessible um, for recruitment, so that you know just just because you're not in a business club doesn't necessarily mean you should have like all the choices to get into the board. So we talked about um, just like vitalizing the job exchange opportunities, uh, business economics, and economic students. And so I hope to do that for every single major, um, starting with the course. I'm planning on attending the appointment table tomorrow and the course. Okay, Sue, yeah. Um, Hi, everyone. So, firstly, I started working on um, my commuter affordability resources campaign. And basically it's gonna be a campaign that just lets students know about the resources we already have um, on campus in terms of affordability for commuter students. So for example, like the daily discount and parking that we have. Um, and I'm hoping to work with the commuter support and programs group um, on campus, I mean, um, with this specific initiative. So 
we met previously, um, but I reached out to them. So hopefully we'll have that meeting this week and hopefully the campaign will be finished um, in time for uh, either the end of this quarter or hopefully it will be done and just ready to go by the start of um, fall. And then I restructured my board. So um, now the director positions are all finalized and um, I have everything for that. So hopefully um, the post will go up tomorrow. Um, so like everyone said, if you can please post it, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and then I've been encouraging people to apply for appointment positions. And I know a few people that are in the process of applying, um, but I will attend um, our event tomorrow and then hopefully spread the word out about that. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I have reached out to the Broom Card office. I have a tentative meeting scheduled with them in July, just because they're wrapping up their fiscal year in June. Uh, but they do have a very strong interest in the digitization of the Broom Card and that they've had previous efforts. So I really do hope to be able to, you know, kind of be like, look, the students looking in because they think this is an important issue and I really want to make it happen. So I'd hope to have that by the start of the school year, hopefully just being able to put it on my work for that during the summer. However, we'll have to see how that meeting pans out. Uh, I'm going to be meeting with Dr. Elizabeth uh, Gonzalez, who's the um, was in charge of the HSI initiative on Friday to discuss how USAC can support the HSI initiative, given that it's coming in 2028. Uh, you know, UCLA have a goal to HSI by 2025. And I, you know, particularly want to support those efforts very much. Um, so I've been involved in those conversations and just want to continue aiding. Um, now that uh, you know, I'm in a USAC position, I really want to ensure that we can have those conversations further and see how we can really support the Hispanic and Latinx community on campus. Um, I have my internal chief of staff, who is my former campaign manager hired officially, as well as the director for my Burn Health platform, who is also on my campaign team. Uh, I finished my exec staff application and my posts. Um, I will probably post within a week or so. I'm just waiting for a full transition, which will you know, happen over the summer. But uh, uh, I, when I met with my uh, predecessor, about some transition plans. Uh, she has a couple events that she's still doing, including the um, ALC, Afro Latinx Connection event that's happening this Friday, which um, I hope to attend as well and you know, just be able to support just because um, that was my predecessor's work as well as you know, technically my office's work as well. So I want to be able to support that the best I can. Um, so once we kind of transition out and she finishes her events for the year, um, I'll kind of transition forward to like the different accounts and stuff just to make sure that there's no leftover, um, anything left for the rest of the school year through her accounts. Um, I did also uh, meet up with Sajana after we were at uh, the USIE event uh, that happened last week. I chatted a bit about the academic senate and figuring out, you know, what's the pathway for one of my platforms to happen. The long route, but I'm getting started on that. Um, and I will also be out there tabling uh, for appointments as well. Uh, so I'll be supporting there. I think I'm free most of the time, but I'll be there for sure at least sometime. So yeah, those are my updates. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, we can also add our first Yes, of course. Um, hello, everybody. So first, um, regarding the ASRF and TGMF allocation, I mentioned this last week, but um, we are just like reg no longer taking applications. We are just working on finishing up the allocation. That's just been a bit of a process because of you know some kind of like delayed communication with organizations. So we're just hoping that we'll be able um, to finish everything, and I'm sure that we will. Last week, I was also able to attend the undergraduate student initiated education reception. Jonathan was there, um, and he's going to be like a facilitator next year, which is really, really exciting. Um, and we were able to honor like the previous facilitators, then of course those for next year. And I was also able to kind of discuss um, like AAC opportunities to the USIE uh, members, but I'm also responsible for appointing a vice chair for the USIE program, as well as I believe uh, five general committee members, a staff to work with the vice chair and chair. So that's something that I'm doing. And I'm also considering um, changing the bylaws so that um, the vice chair does not need to transition into the chair. And this is because facilitators can only be juniors and seniors, um, but that, then precludes them from applying to be vice chair or chair. 
but I find that their experience as facilitators um, makes them kind of like the best candidates to be vice chair in June. Um, and I was also able to attend the Ideas of 20th Anniversary Gala. That was very, very um, inspiring, honestly. And it was amazing to hear from so many, um, you know, such well-educated, like determined, um, really, really inspiring individuals. Um, and that was really great. And Naomi was there. Um, I RCP'd to Hillel's Junity uh, Shabbat, so I'm very excited to attend that. Um, I'm also uh, planning on attending the Afro Latinx Connection Culture Show this Saturday, um, which I'm really excited about. And um, I hope to continue attending these events um, just to be able to really um, get closer, of course, to, like my constituents. <laughs> Um, and I was also able to meet with Mary Romo in the past week, um, and so she was really great because she's like an incredible resource, and I had no idea that, um, you know, she can work so closely in helping me put on programming, um, and she really inspired me to consolidate my programming ideas, so some of the things that I kind of feel like newly inspired to implement in the coming uh, year one being a kind of like midterm week um, and the logistics behind that is I feel like midterms really like dominate the conversation for a couple of weeks out of a quarter, but I want to make it something um, that we can really like, you know, find relief in and de-stress in and be able to connect to each other with. So hopefully being able to put on some kind of like, um, you know, wellness self-care event during that period. Um, also, like, try thinking about putting up, like, little libraries um, around campus. That's, like, if you guys have seen that, like, you, like, donate a book and then you take a book. I think that's kind of cute. Um, and also a grad student, like, partnership shadowing program or an alumni, like, shadowing program. Um, these are just some ideas to consider. Um, like all of you guys have mentioned, uh, my director application is open. Um, so that closes this Sunday, but I'm already doing my exec board interviews and that decision will be finalized tomorrow night. I've already been like transparent about this, but um, the exec board candidates who are not successful, I do keep the application to consider in the next round of directorships um, so they don't have to apply again um, and you know, just an acknowledgement of their application. Um, as far as appointments go, so there's a bit of a delay in getting academic senate appointments up on the portal, but they're up, which I'm very glad for, so I can begin advertising that. I have 19 senators to appoint myself, but also more senators to appoint in partnership with the transfer student representative and international student representative. I think those appointments may not be up yet, so I'm hoping to get them up as soon as possible. Um, and then I also have seven committee appointment seats to fill. Um, Myself, um, I'm also on the appointment search committee, so obviously I need to be uh, searching for appointments for everyone. So I'm going to be tabling tomorrow, like for a pretty significant amount of time, guys, okay? Um, and <laughs> just in general, going to really like, um, of course, do my best to go and speak to as many people as possible. I think I um, have some good ideas for how we can do that in partnership with Gabby and Janice. Um, as far as Academic Senate goes as well, I've scheduled a meeting with Academic Senate leadership. So that is the, the chair for this year, Jessica Catalino, as well as the vice chair and chair elect for next year, um, Andrea Casco, and then April Stefano, who is the executive director of Academic Senate. So this is just to figure out exactly what committee seats I have available. Um, I'm not sure if the one up on the website right now is like based on this year or if it's like updated for next year's seats. So I'll have to double check that and also to get deadlines. Um, they are only available after graduation to me, which is kind of like, uh, okay, I, I should figure something out, but I think I'll just publicize the application before that so I can uh, make sure to reach as many students before we leave for summer. As far as Academic Senate goes, I've already also kind of organized like priorities for issues I wanna push through Academic Senate. I think just realizing how like very important it is for changing policy on campus and really inspires me to take like full advantage of this next year. So one thing is working in partnership with, with Jonathan, as I mentioned, um, the specific idea of this platform to do like a partnership kind of, I think dual accreditation, but partnership type program with a French university. So I'm hoping to push that through, um, as well as a really important kind of ongoing issue with incomplete notations um, and kind of the more punitive aspect of how they can remain on your transcript even after you're given the final grade. Um, so that's something that I'm also hoping to push through and change. 
I have scheduled a meeting with the campus retention committee chair. I also make an appointment to that committee. So just meeting to learn about, um, you know, exactly where the committee is at, how I can help them in the next year, and also how we can align the appointment search timeline. I have also scheduled a meeting to continue the textbook affordability initiative that I've previously mentioned. Um, also in the process of scheduling a meeting with my sole advisor, as I'm not able to attend our Thursday trainings, and so will not be able to meet my sole advisor then. Um, and I am also hoping to reinstate the Student Advocacy Board, which is a new initiative, but then also I think fell inactive this past year. But that is something really important to me that I want to get active as soon as possible. So working on that. And lastly, I have to apply to capital contingency, but I am planning on doing that. So those are my updates. Yes. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, well, I'm just like we'll just go planning like preparation preparation for the future. I've been meeting with my directors to kind of just help them prepare for next year, like meet them all individually and see kind of what they need from me or what they're worried about for next year, and how I can like start to help them now so that next year could be even easier. Um, you know, we see our finalizing like our directors roles and responsibilities and kind of separating the roles and responsibilities for our two commissions for the board of the group bash. We're going to meet on Thursday to kind of finalize. My yes, so uh, we also have a meeting hopefully in the next week with John, Ben, Jessica, Fernando, and like, everyone involved in the group bash like the planning process so we can really get started on that. So we can move. Um, and then just to like recap our events in the event camp future, we had Mulch Bloom last Thursday, which is like our EDM DJ concert. It was really fun. Like the artists had fun. I think everyone had fun. It was a really highly attended event. So I think that went really well. Uh, we also, this Thursday, June 1st, we have two events. We have new tunes at noon, obviously. Uh, at noon at the Kirkhoff Patio, the student group called Smoke and Jokes. So if you know them or excited about them, get hype. There's no RCP needed, and the same goes for our showcase film presentation and award presentation that's happening later that, later that evening at 7 p.m. It's hosted by Tom and Boyd. We're really excited about that. It's like um, films from like all students from across the country, and then we'll have the winner that gets the prize at the end. So exciting. And then lastly, on June 2nd, we have CC Day on the Green, which is kind of an event we've never done before. It's mainly for like the graduating seniors, but it's open to everyone. It's going to be a slip and slide and free catering for BJs. It's going to be on the jams, top of the stairs um, from 12 to 3. Um, yeah, that should be really fun. It's just like a day outside where we all get to party, celebrate, be lit and everything. And then, <laughs> uh, we have one more speaking event for the end of the year, but I can't announce who it is yet. But just stay tuned. It's going to be really high. Like, that will be really high. So get excited for that. It's on June 7th. So keep an eye on for a post, follow UCLA CC on Instagram, and you know. I really love the pitch that shows that I don't know. So yeah, okay, awesome, cool. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, move on to campus. Oh my god, I can't see. <laughs> okay, so um, the past weekend, my chief of staff and myself, we've been in um, interviews for 28 hours. Because we received 70 applications from staff, which is the largest that we've ever had in a long time. So we're very happy. So we have a full staff. We sent out all, all our confirmations, and tomorrow we'll be off for a meeting. So we're excited for that. Um, so a lot of the next few weeks, we'll be onboarding new staff, transition, um, getting the vision set out, and meeting with um, outgoing directors to make sure that I know what's going on everywhere so that we have a smooth transition. And um yeah, and I will be spreading the word about appointments and all all your other offices who are hiring for those who we weren't able to accept on our staff. Uh yeah, that's the first thing. Uh we've also been supporting our CSD projects in submitting the third part of their CAT annual funding application. Um not funding application, their report uh for the community assessments. And then for the Civic Coalition for Basic Needs, uh last week. Um, event on the Basic Needs Resource Fair was a big success. So thank you all who came down to support. Um, and as Eva mentioned, this Thursday, we will be meeting in Student Activity Center to discuss the future direction of the coalition, the structure and the expectations of the different coalition members. Um, Thursday, I will also be helping to present our poster at the Samuel Healthy Campus Initiative Center here and celebration. 
our hopefully we get to talk to some administrators and just introduce what the coalition is about, get our name out there, kind of um, talk about some of our policy requests and see whether we can set up any um, sort of like future meetings that uh, from there. Yeah. And then um, our last CNC event of the year is going to be the service summit. So that's happening this Friday. June 2nd, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Public Affairs Building 2355. So it's going to be really fun. We're going to have a keynote speaker, um, Femi Maharani from Community Engagement and Social Change. We're going to have two workshops. One is on political engagement and intersection of advocacy and service. And the other workshop is by Juan, which is our previous community service commissioner. He's going to do a workshop on beyond allyship to accomplish ship, how to follow through with revolution. So, and we're also going to have 13 student groups who will be presenting their work, their service work throughout the year. And we'll have raffles, photo booths, um, Amazon gift cards, and catered lunch. So, um, we yeah, invite, invite you guys to join us if you're free. And then uh, we'll also be having our CNC banquet this Saturday. And I think like, Naomi will be there. Excited to see you. Um, and it's really just to celebrate our hard work and thank our project continues for everything that, that they have done in the, in the past year. And um, I'm not going to keep looking ahead for um, fall quarter because we are planning to put up some e two events in during the True Green Welcome Week. So last week I met with the Volunteer Center to talk about future partnerships and also participated in the Volunteer Day stakeholder meeting. Um, so fun stuff coming up. Hopefully CNC can um, play a bigger role in trying to improve um, Volunteer Day for next year. And uh, for the next week, I'll be scheduling meetings with also advisors and other um other administ administrators to um start talking about our plan for truth and welcome yeah so that's all for me okay. awesome thank you so much and yeah thanks to you okay cool okay going into i believe for cultural affairs commissioner we have it in place in the chat um so they have a report now so we'll go ahead and change that okay going into the clinic commissioner all right, fantastic. Very similar to everybody else. We're in transition. Very happily in Pac Map. Tired of the entire exact board, so that's great. Director of staff applications open tomorrow morning. It's been a little bit difficult on our side restructuring. We've just been making some changes, especially if anybody has a fellowship program. I know I've talked a little about it a little bit with Eva and Megan, but we're just we're looking for ideas about fellowship. So if anybody has a fellowship program they feel like works, hit me up at it. It's we we need some help. Uh, some of the other stuff too, so a lot of our project teams, they are kind of like continuous throughout the year. So some of these are already actually hired out and staff for them, which is fantastic. I want to give a specific shout out to Sustainables, which is one of our project teams. We now officially do have reusable mugs in Kirkup. So if you go to the Kirkup Coffee House, you don't have to be wasting any, you know, what is in the waste you can ask for a reusable mug. They're super cute. Highly recommended for anybody the next time they're coffee fix. We met with the ASUCLA and one of the directors, where we just went to like one of their houses and talked to them about the like, really shot this the cultural center. And we now have a meeting set up with them to have a follow-up conversation with the services committee and really try to hash out open we'll kind of space, either for God of Ireland or some other area as well. Within the really shot this the cultural center. Other updates too, as we have been talking about with Eva and Megan, we met with Nick Luca, Gordon, and Sefi, and we talked about a lot of different topics, but one of the big ones was with the cultural center. We're looking to find space on campus. It's very difficult. There's a lot of, <laughs> I guess, a spatial shortage. So it's about trying to coordinate where we can maybe rearrange people, especially with the cultural center. It does have that added need for accessibility to be in kind of a more central place on campus to be easily accessible by wheelchair if you've got mobility issues. So it's a little bit of a difficulty, I guess, more getting space allocations, but it seems like everybody else, everything else should, should hopefully come after that. They're very supportive, very receptive to what we are bringing up. We also have meetings scheduled out throughout this week to meet with the LGBTQ, the Black Career Resource Center, and the Transfer Student Center. We're going to be talking about them, uh, their process in which they got their transfer students or their, their centers on campus, you know, some of the issues that they face and some of the ways that they wish they could do it better. When we've done a lot of outreach about what people want to see in the cultural center, and a lot of people have said that they want to be modeled out in the LGBTQ cultural center. So we're just trying to be there, be students, and hopefully learn about what we've done. We also have another meeting with the Berkeley as a disability cultural center. So we have a meeting scheduled with them for next week as well. So really excited to just hear about you know how they've been able to have success and what their programs are at the Berkeley Disability Cultural Center. Also on the cultural center, last little update is I did have an interview with me and Phoebe both did with the Navy Bruins. They're going to run a last uh, feature on that this Friday in their last edition. So that's exciting. Look out for that one. Um, besides that, I just came from a, a Spice and Soul Cool Advisory Committee meeting. So see that. 
It was great to be here, and we just kind of reflected. This is the first year that see back to everybody committed. And we just reflecting on what went well, what we can improve next year. It really looking about how do we get student engagement, student support, by the initiative that see back is pursuing in the, in the coming year. Uh, talking about some of the safe parking initiatives that Eva and I are working on. One of the things, too, is I'm the committee chair for the Transportation Committee, and then, of course, with the Agriculture Council. So we've added that to our discussion that we're going to be having next week at our committee meeting. We talk about how we can have better partnerships, not just between USAC, but between the wider community, especially looking at the Agriculture Council. Been very supportive of the IDA specifically. We'll be making some progress with that. I went to the transfer luncheon in Cairo, the whole space sit here and talk about with other students of some specific transfer student needs, especially when it comes to commuting. One of the big ones that was fine for me is having a better computer hub. That's something that currently exists and actually just expanded one out to strive more to that building. But with the John Wood Center going out of construction for the next two years, we definitely need to be on our best <laughs> to support the support the, the center. And this one is still to strive more. They also talked a lot about how we can incorporate you know, this transit access pass into transfer orientation. So that is all exciting stuff. Uh, we also had a we're meeting tomorrow or Thursday with Eva as well. She already talked about these, but just quickly, the ANCCL Labor Coalition and also the Basic Needs Coalition. Or we're going to be meeting with the ANCCL to try and establish a labor coalition and try and extend, uh, do stuff with dining hall workers and make sure that we're together, right? So all this great stuff. But I think that's it for the facilities commission. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so what we've been working on in FSC, one, the transition. So I have my executive board hired, so we're probably going to release director applications soon. Um, and then we also have to finish off the year with the returns of black folks, eye cookers, and goggles. So we'll probably start that um, next week and during finals week, whenever it's more convenient for students. Um, we also had invested in more lab coats because we run out every year. So we bought 20 additional lab coats. Um, and we'll probably during the summer be working on the promotion of that to make sure more students know about the resources just because there, there are so many that come to me who are like, I didn't know about that. And then I bought a lab coat. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then we're also working with ASUCLA to do a financial fair um, within. Uh, within fall of next year, I have to set up a meeting with Mary from ASUCLA. Um, but we were thinking of like bringing in a keynote speaker and working with uh, different finance clubs at UCLA to just like extend their outreach and then also just like do a wrap or something like that. Um, for the New York Times, I think we're just working out the final things like the contract is just like being read and almost signed, I think. Um, and then I think that is all the updates in FSC. Um, but yeah, uh, we're always open to collaborate, and then we'll probably be doing like coffee dates every sec off. So if you don't get an invitation, it is coming soon. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I'm looking forward to the banner. Well, I mean, the banner. <laughs> This year, you know? Okay. Well, we, well, yeah, Okay. Um, that's going to be those whenever she returns, um, lovely enough to Um, but besides that, um, Okay, so moving on again, Ada and Ashley Um, hey everyone, we have a couple of updates. First of all, I'm meeting with a rep from the, the International Group Business Club sometime this week. They have an event tomorrow, a panelist event, which I'm also going to be attending. Um, I'm working on fixing up some stuff on the ISR websites that are outdated. And I also took control of the ISR social media. Um, we're going to be fixing some stuff on that and then I start posting. Um, um, I've been working on setting up a meeting with the director of the National Center uh, to talk about some concerns about fall 2023. Uh, we're working on structuring the ISR staff positions and we're looking to fill the positions ASAP. I'm going to be tapering tomorrow 
and I heard our CP is for that June and each about to uh, next week. I will do for Jalali and then we'll go over. Thank you so much. No, that's a great update. Hi, all. So sorry, it's a little bit hard to hear on the Zoom. Uh, my name is Becca. I'm the assistant commissioner for SVC, and I'm proxying, proxying for Genis tonight. Um, our transition is going really well. We just finished recruitment, and so we've hired all 46 of our executives and directors for next year, and we had our first meeting this evening, so we're really looking forward to a great year ahead, um, and I think that's pretty much it for SVC. Thanks, all. Okay, awkward. No, that's a lot of hiring. Okay, great. Thank you, Becca. Um, and yeah, now going into admin representatives. Why am I forgetting your last name? How do you do that? Luna, Luna. Uh, actually, uh, how are you all doing today? We're with the mic. Um, hello. Um, okay, in any case, uh, <laughs> no updates for me today. So pass it on, Jessica. <laughs> So I just have two, two quick things. Um, it does feel really loud when you have a mic. Um, so for capital contingency, for those of your offices who are getting computer equipment, um, we would recommend that you do the purchase order route through the UCLA computer store. That's the most streamlined and effective way to get your computer equipment. Um, also, there's a couple things to keep in mind if you are getting a computer. Um, you also need to loop us in when it's ordered so we can get the serial number, we can have, you know, track of it being connected to our network because we've had a lot of, you know, network security issues um, with various computer equipment in Kirkhoff and it's really hard when we don't also have access into that computer to be able to get our IT uh, support team in the system. So I think we'll also probably need to have our webmaster have a, you know, like a web webmaster log into your computer so that we can deal with any network issues. So I just wanted to mention that also we'll need to get, you know, uh, peripheral locks to lock everything to the desk in that um, office. So whatever you have the computer on order, connect with Fernando, he'll loop in our webmaster, we'll get you a lock, we'll help you set it up, we'll, we'll get it tracked. Um, so just keep that in mind, because I know a lot of your offices probably need new computer equipment. <laughs> Everything's probably pretty outdated at this point. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to bring up really quickly. So uh, <clears throat> last year's uh, Office Space Allo Allocation Committee chair um, had been working on a door retrofit in Kirkhoff for 136 which basically similar to the FAC office makes it an auto door opener for accessibility needs for student organizations. So um, we were able to get a quote from campus facilities who would do the installation of the door. There is a cost with that installation. Um, so I wanted to bring that up to you all now that I have the quote in hand and the total cost. So for that door, um, it's $6,700 to basically install the automatic door opener and then provide like the remotes to open it. For one door? For one door, yes. It's very expensive because it's it's a whole like, I mean, you can go by the office and take a peek at what's there. Um, it's basically installing the actual mechanical equipment to allow the door to open and close automatically. Cause these are old doors, right? It's Kirkhoff. <laughs> they're old doors, they're manual, they're not, you know, by any means fancy. So it's, it is kind of a high cost, but the reason I'm bringing that up to you all now um, is that I do believe that there is still some council discretionary funds available that haven't been utilized from the, the previous council. Um, so I feel like that's a good, normally we'd want to have this in hand when surplus is coming up so we can, you know, that's a better time to kind of address some of these needs. Missed that opportunity because we didn't have the quote in hand at the time. So presenting it to you all to consider and think about, we don't need to do any voting on this 
next week or anything like that we have a little bit of time if you want to like chat about it think about it we can also like take it back to our team see if there can be some cost share um somewhere from like our facilities team um but anyways i at least wanted to give you all that update because you know we've been working on this for a while um and we finally have the quote available so we want to make sure we can get that done so that when the group is able to like come into that office space it's ready to go question lots of questions yeah <laughs> um it's kirkhoff 136 yeah so i can't tell you which groups are in that office but it's a shared office space i do know that it's on the first floor of kirkhoff yeah so it's mm -hmm. yeah in kirkhoff mm -hmm. yes well, maybe 136 is the wrong number. There is a student organization. There's a couple student org offices on the first floor of Kirkhoff. It's kind of near where the... No, no, no. It's a student organization. So it's a student organization office that is overseen by OSAC per USAC. So yes. Yes, yes. it's a student org... Okay. Sorry. Let me back it up a little. <laughs> So it's a student organization office. You all appoint an office space allocation committee chair who oversees the office space allocation every year and, and organize that and move in, move out, whatnot. But in any case, it's student organization space that are for undergrad students. Okay. So that's like that's the link there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, that was not clear. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't think anything has been spent from discretionary, and so usually you get you're allocated ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. So we will we can chat about that offline, and then Sarah, did you have a question? Is that another question? Um, no, that one you should answer. Okay. 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 My other question was the first part um, of being like the law for the computer. So I know on the cover contingency. Form it says it also includes the lot. Are you saying that we have lots already? We have some on hand in our office that are like leftover because well we SGS orders them now and again, so we may have some on hand if it wasn't already applied for. But if you already applied for it and got funded, it's fine. Yeah, have some. Left yeah, you could just get them off of like you know Amazon or wherever. They're usually pretty cheap. Yeah, so if you didn't if you didn't prepare and get one, we probably have an extra for you to cover you. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So for those applying, make sure you include it just in case it's not because I know some people already yeah. did it. So yeah. And then we'll usually retain the the keys to that so that if you if for whatever reason you're like moving furniture and we need to unlock it and relock it, like our webmaster would be the point person to come to your office and help facilitate that just to make sure it's secure. Um, because we have had in the past uh, computer or technical equipment that was ordered and not locked down and disappeared very quickly from the office. So if that it's it sucks, right, to have you know brand new couple thousand dollar equipment just disappear. Um, so and and you know there's a lot of office spaces are shared offices. Like there's staff like somebody might you know just enter your office and leave the door open and then you know it could be somebody passing through the hallway so it really needs to be locked down to like a desk or something that's like stable in the office so that it doesn't disappear yeah. wow. okay <laughs> um i don't know if this is a offline question for my computer do you guys have the like login for my chance we may but you will we have, we'll have to check Okay. Yeah, most likely no, <laughs> right. which is why, which is why, you know, proactively when you all replace your computer equipment, if we have a login for the webmaster, we at least can get, somebody can get into that computer to help reset it for you. The problem is, you know, if just the office folder has that information, it doesn't get passed on, we can't really do anything to help. So we have had that situation come up in the past. So. Yeah, and we'll we'll try to see if we can get into it. If we can't, then you know it's probably just gonna have to waste it. Unless there's a way to like hack a computer. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that kind of technical person, but yes. <laughs> so that, that was it for me. I'm gonna pass on my.
you guys, I can't believe how much work you guys have done in like two weeks. You're, I'm tired. <laughs> um, just recovering from Jazz Reggae, Alicia and your team did a really great um, festival. It was lovely. It's all cleaned up, so you guys free and clear. I'll send you your bill. <laughs> um, just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the end of the year. I'm here for you. Um, Evan, um, I would like to connect with you on Wooden Club there since I'm rec. I have some things I need to work through to help student groups, so I will connect with you. Um, <laughs> do you want to come too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, also, Along with the Wooden Center, um, Sunset will be oh. getting demoed. The red tag's finally getting demoed, but next year. So that will be down around the same time, but we don't think it's the whole facility. So I will have updates on that later. It's going to be really pretty. The renderings are gorgeous. I don't know, Evan, have you seen them? Oh, but, uh, okay. Well, maybe we can sit in Aaron McMahon's office and look at the rendering. Um, yeah, other than that, I, you know, we have a meeting next week and then I think we're on summer break a little bit. Good luck in our finals, but I'll tell you that next week. <laughs> wow. Hey, hi. Oh, this is love. Uh, hey, hi, hello. My name is Jonathan. I don't know that by now. Um, okay. So things I have on my list. Um, first off, I mentioned this last week, um, but a handful of your offices, your predecessors have outstanding bills. Um, and I would like to bring it up again, one, because I'm going to personally now start hounding those people. Um, so if you're in the email and you see that from me, it's directed towards your predecessor. Um, and those people would be EVP, CAC, and CSC. Um, so I know who you are. Um, good. Good, good, good. Yes. Yeah. President FAC and SWC have all finished and CEC is in the process. So thank you to those four. Um, um, next, I have office access. So um, I will be also be sending another email to your current emails addressed to your predecessors um, to remind them that Friday is their last day of office access. Um, so they need to be cleaning and cleaning out, all that kind of jazz, and everyone for their year will be kicked off. The door. If you're a year such as, say, your uh, Sarah or your Tyra, or you have other, if you have particular door needs that need to stay, connect with those individually. Um, your all's access starts on Monday. So I'll be sending out details on exactly how to go about that and how to start adding yourself and your people to your doors. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. Um, just by a quick show of hands, can I get an idea on who is not in the official officer email? Just Naomi. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so we'll do, uh, just so just so, um, probably uh, after, I think maybe next week you should probably have it, Naomi, um, at least by then. Um, will stop putting all of your personal emails on things like the agenda and announcements and that kind of stuff. And we'll shift just using the council listserv. Um, it makes it a million times easier for everyone that has to send you all things. Um, and appointments, uh, I'm glad it's on your radar. I'll probably be there tomorrow at some point to say hello, um, but BOD next week. Um, if you do not have access, I, I hope that you have all taken the time to attempt to access the workflow system in my UCLA. If you have not, please do it today or tomorrow. Please do it soon so we know if there's problems that we can give SAIT a few days to do it. Um, if we have problems, they, they don't work on fast schedule. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you all. They need a day or two to do things. So last minute requests aren't really going to fly with them. Um, especially if there's, please double check on that too, that all of your appointments are on there. If they're not on there, we need to add them. Um, and trainings, Thursday noon, state rooms is the sole training. Um, and then next Tuesday uh, at six here in this room is your mandatory care training, Nicole Green from CAPS. She's wonderful, we'll be coming to give the training. She's awesome. Um, so we will see you here at six. A reminder that it is mandatory. So if you know that you're not going to be there, please follow up with me individually now. Um, last, but certainly not, well, actually not.
class. Um, your summer schedule, um, you all, someone, not me, will need to put it on your agenda. Either you add it today or you need to put it on your agenda for next week um, so that you all can discuss and solidify when you're going to be meeting during the summer. Um, so that is, and vote your summer quorum, yes, um, so that you can, so that not everyone has to be here if possible, because, you know, things happen in summer. Um, so keep that in mind. Someone hopefully deal with that. <laughs> and then last last thing I had, um, I sent out my email today to sign up for one-on-ones with the people that I'm the point person for in the next three-ish weeks. Um, and I'm sure my other colleagues will be doing so sometime soon as well. So please keep an eye out for that. Those meetings are mandatory, but they'll be fun. Do you want to do a fun on one? I'm always open to that. We could go sit on jams. We can do whatever. Um, yeah, I'll go to the slip and slide. <laughs> Let me know. So that's coming. And then the last thing is hiring. And I'm going to pass to Fernando for that. Um, hi, everyone. Um, oh, this is loud. <laughs> no, I work at home. Oh, man. Um, okay, uh, so with hiring, one third of you, I sent uh, emails to uh, either Friday evening or today because you need to do an additional step to either get you hired, or actually to get you hired by HCLA uh, HR. Um, uh, the deadline is tomorrow. There's a little grace period for Thursday if you don't want to experience any delays, obviously. Don't uh, get the paperwork in on time, um, then you will still get paid in full, just uh, a little bit delayed. Um, keep me in the loop if you have any struggles. Uh, I requested forms. I've spoken to some of you and all the issues with getting those forms. So the more I am in the loop, the better I can help out and you can start your stipend as soon as possible. Uh, the other thing is, I did confirm that there's ten thousand dollars in discretionary, um, and that there was one more thing. Oh, uh, any other position forms that you need filled out, you can email me, and I can either look them over or help you uh, fill it out personally. So that that's an additional activating energy you don't need to deal with. Um, and we can just get your register forms in and pay for all your bills. If we did not get an email for hiring, are we good? Yes. Uh, for some people, yeah. Yeah, it's just fine with you, so. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, now we're going to do this. I'm 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 going to do this. Can you drop the link on the here in the bottom there? Yes. Right. You know, come back there. Yeah. Okay. Did did we share our slides with you? So we don't slide. Okay. No worries. So the slides just it kind of like had a timeline 
Um, but this is, we can do this as our introductions and we'll get to that later. But hi, my name is Ariella Gahan. I'm a fourth year political science major and community engagement and social change minor. Um, next year, I will be getting my master's at UCLA in American Indian Studies. And originally I was gonna go into law, but as I get closer to law school, I seem to be finding other opportunities for me. So <laughs> advocate, I guess I could say, um, for environmental and indigenous rights. Sydney, if you wanna go. The news on Zoom. Oh, sorry. She's in DC right now. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, While we're doing that, um, I'm a member of the Chickasaw Nation, and my tribe is originally from Oklahoma, and so I was on the dog roll, so quite a while back, um, but that dog roll ancestor, so I think like 200 years ago, actually came over to California, so very well oriented with the land and the layout. Grew up here in Northern California my whole life. And so that's a little bit about like my background. Okay, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, yep. Okay, awesome. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Sydney Pike. I'm a first year transfer student here at UCLA. So third year junior standing. Um, and I'm a native Hawaiian student. Um, I'm a member, I'm an active member of PISA, which is UCLA Pacific Islands um, Student Association. Um, I'm also one of the co-coordinators co for UCLA's UC Seed campaign, which is um, the UC-wide campaign um, for students enacting environmental defense. Um, and I'm also the one of the co-coordinators for UCLA's newly started um, Mauna Kea Protectors chapter here on campus. Um, also, we had a presentation. I don't know if I'm supposed to share it or I don't know how that works, but yeah, just let me know. <laughs> Actually, the presentation, so the resolution we get kind of just a read through of it, and then we go out and look at the. So sorry about that miscommunication there. Yeah, so we can always do that. I okay. So we're very so new to the use of the process. Thank you for teaching. So we will definitely get a welcome back if you have the time to attend um, next week, whether it's through Zoom or in person. Um, to do a special presentation. So that would be interesting because we still, y'all do the work in those lives, but we still love to see it. Um, but for today, we need to go through the revolution. Um, no, we really like appreciate you coming here and like allowing us to be here in this space. Um, it's a privilege. It's something that we've been advocating for for a long time, but there's kind of a smaller percentage of us and it's kind of hard to get us all in one place at one time. Um, so moving into it, just kind of, I, I'm a member of ASA and I'm very involved. Um, I did some involvement in USAC in sustainability and knowing the history of California, I know what native people used to live like in this land, which is very, very different from today. And so it gives me an advantage because I know the history and I know how we get our water and I know the tribes that live in LA, but many people don't. And so when we go to address sustainability issues, my approach is a very non-traditional way because it's all I know. So when it comes to science, there's not many Native American or Hawaiian Native folks that come to college. So what do we do? It's kind of hard and we're just now getting here. So as a land grant institution, that means that this land was once Tongva, Gabrielino, Quiche Nations, um, this is to them, it's always been Kurubunga. So that's why the steps were renamed to Kurubunga steps. Um, and so I'm just happy to take this opportunity to find ways to go beyond the land acknowledgement and kind of talk about indirect and direct issues that we are facing in the indigenous community. Um, and kind of because of UC administration being very hardcore in their Western science beliefs so that they're kind of not giving us fair representation. Instead, if you want to add your background. 
Yeah, so my background, um, getting involved with this resolution. So this is my first year at U first year here at UCLA, and I was really lucky to find a community of like fellow Native Hawaiian students and as well as other Pacific Islander students here on campus. Um, and I actually didn't know that the UC system was investing in the 30 meter telescope until I actually got here. Um, so it's sort of been this weird experience trying to navigate how our institutions are supporting us um, when they are desecrating such an important aspect of our land. Um, Mauna Kea is a sacred island um, on the island of Hawaii, um, and it's revered as like the elder ancestor to us. It's sort of like this embodiment of our deities um, within our culture and religion. Um, and there are currently already like 13 telescopes um, that reside on Mauna Kea. Um, and it's been under the watch of the University of Hawaii, um, their Institute for Astronomy. Um, and they have not been taking care of the land or doing due diligence in allowing um, Native Hawaiian members to sort of advocate um, on the importance of the land and the cultural meaning behind it. Um, the 30 meter telescope is gonna be the biggest telescope to date. Um, and it's supposed to like have like, give leaps in like astronomy um, and the study of the stars and things like that. But it is a $1.4 billion telescope. Um, and this goes all the way back to 2001. So the people of Hawaii have been fighting this for a really long time since before I was born. So it really is interesting that I'm here today sort of speaking on it from my perspective. Um, but it is something that holds a lot of cultural significance to myself. Um, a lot of my family members were on the Mauna putting their bodies on the line back in like 2016 um, when the protests really were at full force. Um, so it really just is a super important issue for me as well as like other community members here on campus at, UC at UCLA specifically. Um, so again, like Ariella said, I really just wanna thank you guys for the time to sort of speak on this as well as on like this resolution um, that Ariella sort of took the lead on and I was able, like lucky enough to join and help in on. Um, so yeah, I'll hand it off to Ariella. Sorry, I'm not sure how all this works in presenting it this way. <laughs> So in reading through the resolution, um, I submit that Mr. Williams will have to read the time for a couple of us to kind of go over on their own, or we have somebody read it out um, loud. Any preference here? We kind of like read it to you and then some. So if you guys want to just look it over and look at the details, um, feel free. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll spend a couple minutes um, and just let me know when those are done. And then we'll go ahead and take it up. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you guys know, like, how much of the UCLA like, has specifically invested in, in the COT, and, like, if that money would, like, kind of pass. Yeah, so I know that, um, I want to say it's in the billions um, that the UC itself has invested. And there was an article back in 2014 that explicitly came from UCLA saying that they had invested 60 million. And that was from an astronomer professor getting grant funding in order to do this specific project. And another thing that we found is that a lot of our private donors like will contribute money specifically for this project. Uh, however, it's like jumping through a lot of websites and a lot of organizations to get the exact amount. We just know that UCLA has been involved and we've had, you know, faculty involved specifically with this project. And it's been the same way at UC Santa Cruz and UC Santa Barbara. It's just as each school had faculty involved, you can kind of only put the pieces together. So as of right now, I don't know how much we are actively putting into it. I just know they always had a role, our faculty have had a role, and it's, you know, it's ongoing. They wanted this to be built, so I'm sure we have contributions into it. Yeah, if I could just add on to that with just a couple of specifics. Um, to answer your question, I don't know exactly like the exact amount UCLA specifically has invested in or like their private donors, but I do know that the UC system as a whole Right now, the total cost is like the total cost is estimated to be about 1.2 billion, 
Um, and this amount, like this cost amount is shared across like the consortium members who are investing in this, which includes the UC system and Caltech, I believe. Um, and right now, you, like Ariella said, the UC is funding its share, like primarily through like private donors and like private investments. Um, and I, as of right now, the, like the UC as a whole has invested 2.4 billion. Um, and specifically the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation has contributed 250 million. Um, and that's a gift that's shared both between the UC system as a whole and Caltech. Um, but the UC has also said that um, it's going to match, like the UC's 50 million share is being raised by campus leaders through like, like philanthropic support um, and building relationships between like the university and their generous donors. So we do know UCLA is having those conversations, having those um, discussions and agreements with their private donors. Any additional questions, Yeah. Oh no, I mean, real quick, just that as far as comments go, like I want to say thank you um, to both of you guys for like coming and speaking to us. I personally feel really inspired by hearing like your personal stories, but also knowing like how much community effort and organizing went into this. So, um, you know, I anticipate good news tonight, but also hopefully we can continue to help you guys. Um, especially in connections to various funding organizations. So that's always a possibility to move forward and you can always feel like welcome to reach out to us to continue with that process. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I also want to just say the same thing. Thank you, Ayala and Sydney for, you know, for writing this resolution and coming down today. Um, I was, you know, just do, doing like a Google search and I, I think I know that recently they, after the protest, they tried to have like a little committee where they invited like na native Hawaiian um, people, part of the cultural, uh, part of the cultural practitioners to also sit on the body to kind of get their input as well on like how to move forward with this. I was just wondering, is there any updates on what is going on right now? Because I know that there is a lot of back and forth discussion and they've tried a little bit to kind of um, consult the native, uh, the native Hawaiian, but yeah, do you guys know like what's happening with um, in terms of where the project is headed as of now? Yes. So um as of right now, um the 30 meter telescope, it's not it's currently not being built. They're waiting on getting permits right now. Um and like the wait time to get those permits is about two years. Um so it there's no possible way it could start being built now, um, but now, which means now is the most crucial time to be voicing our opinions about this and to stop it altogether and reinvest those funds somewhere else. Um, but to address your question about like including Native Hawaiian voices into the conversation and seeing their opinions, um, recently we actually like a lot of Native Hawaiian students and Native students in general here at UCLA were able to participate in sort of a discussion with TMT stakeholders um, and researchers who um, are sort of taking the lead on this project. Um, and it was actually here on our campus, on UCLA's campus. Um, Ariella and I were both there to sort of voice our opinions and where we stand um, along with PISA and ACE's um, viewpoints as well. Um, and I think in regards to that, they are like to say they are including, trying to include Native Hawaiian voices. I know they said they've been doing a lot of research and like community engagement, um, specifically in the area of Waimea, which is um, a, um, which is on Oahu, but also in areas um, like near Mauna Kea as well, which is on the big island of Hawaii. Um, and they said they've been engaging with them. However, we have found when speaking with them and while we were in those discussions, that a lot of their practices and research tactics are, um, for lack of a better term, a bit manipulative um, and just not very transparent with the community. Um, they didn't go into it um, explaining who they were, what they were there for, and sort of like um, what they were trying to find out. So it was a bit disheartening to hear that. Um, and as we were voicing our opinions, it was very one-sided in the sense of they weren't looking to really discuss um, any different moves or anything like that or changing their specific like their stance on TMT 
Um, so that was a very dis disappointing experience to say the least for not just myself, but a lot of um, like our community members and peers here at UCLA who were there as well. Um, but yes, um, you are correct in that they are trying to include more Native Hawaiian voices. However, there is a lot of opposition um, and that has been growing in the past years. I think at the beginning of like the entire TMT movement, it was pretty split in that half, um, half of like residents in Hawaii believed it should be built, whereas half didn't. Um, but it has been increasingly um, going on the side of against it. I think right now it's at like 60 to 40 something percent um, against versus for. Um, and additionally, I think it's also important to take into account that just because they're engaging with residents of Hawaii, it doesn't mean they're Native Hawaiian voices. In fact, a lot of Native Hawaiian, um, um, a lot of Kanaka Maoli's, Kanaka Oivis, which are Native Hawaiian people, they are actually displaced from um, our native land in Hawaii. Um, in fact, there are more um, Native Hawaiians who live off the islands than on the islands. So like the data is a bit like skewed um, and not fully representative of the Native Hawaiian voice just because it's including a variety of different people who just live on the islands, which is important as well. But I think it is important because of like the sacred and ancestral ties to the land that we listen and prioritize um, Native Hawaiian voices. I hope that answered your question, but let me know if it didn't. And also Ariella, if you wanted to chime in too. Sorry. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard because this has been going on for I think 20 years now. And so for a telescope to be still trying to, but it have taken 20 years for after Japan, China, Germany, and the EU, and all of these other donors that we don't know about have been trying to put this telescope on this island. I have to give the Kanaka Maoli credit because this tiny group of indigenous people have kept them off for this long. But I have been doing a lot of work with California tribes, um, and I've seen clans, nations, they kind of, we're all kind of, they're changing because as California is doing this truth and healing report, which is something that we have not even understood Kanakamaoli in that sense yet, we're, we're all starting to realize that California Native Americans had a really hard time like getting back into society after settlers came here. So, you know, there was genocide, there was forced labor, there was uh, for sterilization. So, you know, as they are kind of getting their voices and their power back, we've seen, and something I've seen, because I've been to DC and I've advocated, I've been to the state and the local government, and I've asked, like, hey guys, I you know there's all these problems, and hoping that, like, one of these offices would come to be like, okay, it's fine, you, you know, we can help you, and they're all just kind of, like, stunned because they don't really know about Indigenous issues. So one thing that I've seen is that a lot of politicians who don't kind of really understand um, indigenous people and how they relate to community. Like they they have tried to bribe tribal leaders since the second they set foot on the Eastern soil. So what they do is in order to get or gain or lose support is they will put communities against each other. And that's something that I've seen happen in Hawaii and they have the resources to do so they can promise certain people certain things in order to win them over um and in so in the tmt initial meeting like we had found out that they were researching with minor children in a school and they were lying to them saying that they were teachers and so that was that was the problem with me is that we're talking about consent we're talking about building relationships with these people when you know parents didn't sign a form if they didn't know who they were and that's just, that's unethical. I don't think that should be contributed to the scientific research because they're not an adult yet. And then even in going to LA community and gathering LA community to kind of get their voices on it, it's it's really heartbreaking to see the reality of kind of what we're dealing with right now today um, after everything we've been through. But I think the first, and I have to thank my friend Irving who's here, the first institution to let Native people come and gather and just publicly meet in a space was 
Social Justice Youth Coalition. And if you don't know, it's a school in South Central. And it's a primarily African-American black continuation charter school, something along those lines where it's for community, it's by community, and it's actually in an old juvenile system. So it's really awesome. I've been there many times to do many different things, but as I pulled out, there was a funeral for a boy and cops just swarmed the entire school and like above our head, there was helicopters. So um, that was kind of scary. And then, you know, we had our little gathering with all of the natives and we were all so happy and like, we felt like it was a special night, but a couple of days went by and I realized like all of the violence that our communities go through collectively because of settlers colonials and because of the US government. Like, so what we're dealing with in Hawaii is just what we're dealing with all over the US with sacred sites. We're dealing with police brutality and more than more than just Los Angeles community, but here to see it firsthand and to know that that's the community that's allowing us to gather. It's not coming from the government. At this point, we sincerely suggest that you don't trust the government when it comes to that because our only support has ever come from internal. And like, yes, we do get bribed. Yes, sometimes people slip up, but truly any kind of negotiation with the government has never been good. So sometimes, you know, they try to withhold that information or keep things private internally as well. Yeah. Okay, before we go ahead and go, I would just like to say, on behalf of all of us, that thank you both for the work and um, you know, well for bringing this to us and the work that we do with this presentation. I genuinely do appreciate the time that this took. Uh, um, and I'm hopeful for a good result when we go to voting, um, but I would just like to follow up and say that I would definitely like to help with some of these hours, especially with the educational programs, um, being the teacher for myself and being able to invest in the learning system program on this campus. I just have to help with uh, that and some other uh, items that I see listed here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion. It, it was more of a comment um, regarding the debate. Uh, um, I just really wanted to echo my appreciation for both me being here as well. You know, as someone in particular. <laughs> Uh, from the Czech people in Guatemala, um, which is something I carry with very much pride every day. I really appreciate you all highlighting the different issues impacting different Native people, in particular those of Hawaii and Bali. And, you know, I, I really hope as well for a good result, you know, to ensure that we can start echoing support uh, and ensuring that Indigenous communities all over the world can finally start having, you know, being heard at all. So, yeah, thank you. Move to approve the resolution in opposition to the UC's contribution to the development of the 30 meter telescope on Monakia and demand for support for indigenous community. Second. Great. So, motion. Get a second. All in favor. All right. And 12. So, we have 12, 0, 0. And the motion happens. Well, the drug move should not start. <laughs> And so that closes us out. So our meeting is adjourned at 9 p.m. Thank you so much.